thanks so much, Nyala, Gary, mm -hmm. for coming and hanging out with us for a second here at the, uh, at the gala. It's been awesome watching your career being inspired by you, and uh, hopefully we can share some, some of your experiences. One of the main, main uh, points of this, this podcast is to share that knowledge and that wisdom that you've gained from the path that you've gone on. So tell us a little bit about you know, your journey to get where you are here and your story. Where did you, where did you start from? Well, it started a long time ago, I guess. I'm uh, 70 years old, so um, I've been around a long time. I've seen a lot. Um, you know, I started as a child, I suppose. I knew I wanted things better, so I uh, just set out to do that any way I could. Mm -hmm. What on, on that path, you know, being one of the first Indigenous actors, Native representation, what were some of the roadblocks and the, the challenges that you faced along the journey? Well, I never thought of it like that at all, because, you know, before me it was Chief Dan George, mm -hmm. who, was a hard laborer. I mean, that's what he did for most of his life was work on building bridge embutments out of stone, you know, rock. Uh, Will Sampson, he was a rodeo guy. They found him at the rodeo. Our own Jay Silverheels, he was a lacrosse player. They found him playing lacrosse, you know, up in the North Shore in British Columbia. I mean, if you do a little research, you see Pauline Johnson was telling poetry off the back of a train when Custer, you know, destroyed Wounded Knee, you know. Just imagine that, you know, how much oppression. And yet, Pauline's reading poetry off the back of a train, you know, just telling her story. So, you know, we have a long history of it. We just mm -hmm. don't uh, often acknowledge, you know, storytelling. Look at Sitting Bull, he got squashed, but he went to performance, right, mm -hmm. as a means to tell his stories. So, you know, it's, there's a long history of oppressed people, you know, rising up from the ash and, and making things work. Mm -hmm. Persevering but, through those challenges, you know? Oh, yeah. I Resiliency. Mean, I've been to Nicaragua. You want to see challenges? This is Gloryville. <laughs> I've been to Guatemala, you don't know, you don't see what goes on in Central and South America to indigenous mm -hmm. people. You know, we got it pretty lush up here. Mm -hmm. I mean, if anything, we got to start helping them, right? We got to start moving south with the efforts that we're engaging. I mean, at least they got their language. You know, a lot of those colonies south of the border, you know, they weren't as treacherous as they are up here, right? So. There's a lot more indigenous people who know their language down there and culture. So it's uh, something to think about. Mm -hmm. So why do you think now in this sort of time frame is it so important for us to keep amplifying indigenous stories and voices and keep sharing and pushing them out there? I mean, all you got to look at is the state of the earth, right? Mm -hmm. There's no water. There's, they've polluted everything. You know, the more I find out that the forest industry and Dow Chemical lobby the U.S. government not to grow hemp. Now, hemp is like 5,000 times better than cutting trees down for pulp and paper, right? You can build mm -hmm. from hemp, right? Like, just that effort of corporate America, corporate Canada, they're all in it together, right? And they've literally destroyed the continent for extraction of minerals and trees and water and you name it. And that wasn't the way we lived life. It was a different look at how the world works. Like we were supposed to live here forever, right? If you look at our traditions, there was no end. <laughs> it was for perpetuity, right? It's a for cycle. seven generations looking that far ahead. Mm -hmm. But when you got a two, four year system we're living in, it's just ludicrous, right? Mm -hmm. it's just ridiculous. And the only means of survival on the planet Earth is us, finally. I mean, are we the caretakers of Earth or what? If we are, we've mm -hmm. been doing a really bad job. Terrible. Really bad job. Mm -hmm. And so when I go to the students here and they're all shy, like, what, what are you doing? You, you got to learn to speak up. You got to take it. There's not many of us left. 
you guys got to move forward. You got to learn that language because there's the answers, right? So, you know, there's a lot of work to do, but to, to even toy with the idea that this is kind of like, you know, the golden path for us finally, it's long overdue. You know, obviously we have to get into the, you know, we have to start affecting people's consciousness. And if we're not reaching them by social media or any other forms, then to me, we're not doing our job. Mm -hmm. So it's just a must be, there's nothing kind of pretty or exciting about it, really, because it's a lot of work. Yeah, it's some heavy lifting, you know, constantly telling those stories and being the voice of change and changing that consciousness to be aware and those connections to land and water. And uh, yeah, language, language, identity. Because that's the true study of nature based on observation over centuries of time. Those are where the answers are for us, human survival. Hmm. So if you were giving advice to say, a new filmmaker or a new actor, someone that's just starting their career, what would you tell them? Get off your ass. Stop it twiddling your thumbs. Mm -hmm. Get focused. Don't fuck around. This is serious. Mm -hmm. So if you had a message for the world, for Canada, what do you think it would be? You know, I'm, I'm old now, I'm 70. I'm in my final years, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I did a lot, you know, I did a lot and I'm tired. So, you know, I don't hold the answers. Mm -hmm. You hold the answers, right? I don't, I, I, I gave all I had for all those years and uh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna step aside, you know, I, I, gotta, I gotta go out with some peace in my heart, right? I mean, that's what it's all about, right? So I gotta find that again. Because I look at the world and the situation now and it's, it's distressing. You know, it's, it's seriously distressing. And the motivations, I don't, the motivations are questionable, mm -hmm. you know. Even when I tried to launch Aboriginal Voices Radio, I was trying to tell Canada its own history that hasn't been told to them. They wouldn't allow us to do that. They wanted to cover it up. We knew about the residential school, got worse and worse as it went west. Mm -hmm. We knew that 20 years ago as journalists, right? But we wanted to story tell our way back to them so they can understand, you know, the genocide on this continent. You know, they needed, we needed that 20 years to socialize them. But no, they, they got to do it their way, right? Only because they want to exploit everything. So they don't want us to have a voice. And they know we'll challenge their voice of ex exploitation, right? So they keep politicizing us to undermine us, always, especially with media. I mean, look at Aboriginal People's Television Network. I got the mm -hmm. license for that. They should be cutting edge journalism. Mm -hmm. They should be having, why don't they have reservation dogs on? Why don't they pick up Rutherford Falls when it skips a beat? Where, where are they? You know, it, 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 all of that was infiltrated right from the start. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard to find trust. Mm -hmm. It's hard to find someone who's really going to bring everything forth, right? So it, it's awfully fresh, you know, frustrating mm -hmm. for me to, to watch it, to come home and be interviewed by a guy, some non-native guy who's had this job for 12 years. He's the journalist for APTN. 12 years he's had that job. What gives him a thought? They can't, my nephew's cutting grass. Mm -hmm. Why can't my nephew work that camera and ask questions, you know? Yeah. This guy's had that job for 12 years, but, you know, he says, we know you found it, got the license, and then he's asking me what I think, and I can't even look at the guy, you know? Like, I can't look at him. Like, where were they in 2005 in Caledonia? APTN was on the other side. They weren't even on our side, you know? Like, that's you your don't own tell media. our story, right? Mm -hmm. So it's all about control. It's all about control, and CBC and that whole thing has been controlling and 
downplaying our stories. When you go up mm. to where you went to Northwest Ontario, that, that story is old. That's 40, 50 year old story. We know the history of pulp and paper in the mm -hmm. North. Mm -hmm. It's killing people. That's where all the cancer in Ontario is coming from. Yeah. Do they stop? Do they ever ask about the nuclear station outside of Toronto? Do they ever talk about, do you ever see CBC do anything about that? That thing leaks. There goes five million people. Like there's no mm -hmm. discussion about it if it's safe. We go into these ages. We went into the industrial age not knowing the pollution factor and the impact of that pollution on our lives. You know, and then they just create new diseases, right? And now we're going into this age of communication. It's just blindfolded. We're just all jumping in tenfold. We don't know the impact of that. I can see it in the grammar school here. They're all freaked out about doing anything because someone's going to tease them. Someone's going to bully them because they'll see them on Instagram or they'll see them wherever in social media. So we're going into this again as people, as a society, totally blind, but it's all a commercial enterprise. It's all to make money at the risk of everyone. They don't care, right? So yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm probably not the right guy to ask this stuff. No, I think I mean, it's important. I feel important. like I know too much. Right? I, th I think the... I've, I've been working at it so much that I, I see through everything now, and it's really hard. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really hard to go up there and try to make people laugh tonight, you know, sometimes. So. Sometimes we need to think, you know, not Always. just laugh, not just we be entertained. We, we need to think. We don't want, you know, people on a, sitting on their tush just all day long, not willing to help structure this change that is obvious. They live in it, right? Mm -hmm. that I understand that too, right? Yeah, I think there's a, there's an ignorance to it, you know, like we, especially with the water insecurities, how we don't even think about where water's going, where it comes from, how it gets processed. It's like someone will take care of that. Yeah. Someone yeah. else will monitor that. But that could be a good radio show. I mean, I know if I get good information on audio, I'm there, mm -hmm. you know? That, see, that's the challenge. The audio doesn't impact your consciousness, like put your mind in the beta, mm -hmm. like the TV does. It's really a brainwashing machine. But the audio, and that's why our culture came to us through oral, mm -hmm. because we hear those stories and we create the images that they're not created for us. So it's a much more honest medium. Your mind is working, you know, right. to create the answers. That's why we're, you know, so excited to launch a podcast for Seeing Red and to just share stories, truthful, honest stories. It doesn't always have to be what people want to hear, yeah. but, you know, the, the honest truth. And I think that organizations like seeing red that are taking that control back, taking that ownership back where we control the narrative, we control the stories, we control the films that are being made and who's making them and who's telling them. Mm. You know, I think we need more, yeah, more of that. Common sense, but mm -hmm. yeah.